Hi friends. Today we are going to discuss about Unix server patching. I hope everyone saw my previous video. We discussed lot on server performance issue. So either it is a technical point of view, troubleshooting, or entry point of view. We discussed lot. Hopefully everyone enjoyed it. So today we are going to discuss about Unix server patching. Okay, we'll see one by one. See, the interview is asking how you are applying a patch. What are the steps you are following before applying a patch? So we need to see one by one. The first two points, if you see the first two points, the process might be changed here and there. Since that you are working, it depends on the machine. So the first thing is once you get a scheduled downtime or uh, from a concerned team or a client, you can go ahead and raise a CR. So by creating a CR, you need to collect all the server pre-configuration details. We'll see one by one. So before that, I will tell one thing. So the command listed over here, this is applicable only for CentOS and Red Hat. However, the entire process is same for irrespectively all the Unix devices. Okay. Okay. See. And the first thing is you need to collect the server uptime, host name, and what version it is, what kernel version it is, okay, and then the boot information. If it is a RHEL 7 or CentOS 7, probably the configuration uh, path and the name would be different. And then you need to collect the mount point information, and you need, if it is LVM, you need to collect all the disk information and VG display and LV display and whatever it is. If it is a multipath, you can touch the relevant command and you can collect all the information. And then you need to identify what type of stuff is running on this machine. If you are working in a prolonged period, you can easily identify whether it is a stage or prod or QA and what else. Okay. We will just hold this point and we will come, I will discuss again on this point. We will come to the this point. The sixth one is very important. Server backup. The server backup should be up to date. For some organization, if it is a VM, they may go with a snapshot. Whatever it is, the server backup or snapshot should be up to date before applying a patch. The seventh one is you can collect all the um, server IP details and route information and all. The eighth one is this is also one of the important thing. The M check update. It will provide all the available updates. Most probably in production environment, uh, you don't have any direct internet connection, so port 443 should be blocked. So for that, uh, you are getting a available patch from your internal repo. Or if you have a satellite, you will get update, updated patches from the satellite servers. Okay, you need to collect all the information before applying a patch. What are the patches we are going to update? Okay, the ninth one is this is also one of the important point. The interview may ask how you are applying a patch for the cluster servers. This is not a, a straightforward patch what we are uh, doing for the uh, normal servers. If it is a cluster, you need to follow few steps before applying a patch. So what are the steps? The first thing is you need to identify the service groups running on which machine exactly. So you need to find out this machine, find out that machine and you can just move the uh, service group to the other pair node and freeze that machine and then you can apply a patch. Vice versa you need to do. Okay. Ensure that the service group running machine should be freezed and then you can apply a patch for the other pair node. Vice versa, you need to follow. It is applicable for both PCS and BCS process wise. Probably the command might differ since it is these two are two different uh, vendors. And the tenth one is very very important. Check the console and ILO status. Why it is important? See, after applying a patch, if something goes wrong, how will you rectify? How will you troubleshoot it? From the console status only, you can identify the machine exactly uh, sitting in which state. So this is very important thing. So whatever it is, whether the browser issue or it's a credential issue, make sure that the ILO part and console access should be fine. Okay, I just correlating this 11th and 5th point. So why we need to identify what type of stuff running on this machine? Since if it is, if you for example if you take rack space or if you if you take a GPFS storage cluster server, so these are all for particular level. Uh, I mean you will get a kernel compatibility issues. The kernel and the other uh, storage cluster or rack space that is some compatible compatibility issue might arise. So before applying a patch, make sure that the kernel and everything should be 
fine to avoid a conflict for example the db team they will tell boss you can apply a patch full patch exclude the kernel please exclude the kernel sometimes you can some other application team tell please exclude this particular patch xyz package so you can just go ahead and exclude the patch while updating a patch either it is a kernel or something this is how you need to uh, work out okay all set we have we are done with the pre configuration details and then you can go ahead and submit the cr as per the schedule you can just upgrade the patch with the simple command which i listed over there and then post verification you can check the kernel version and do the server health check if it is a cluster you can check the service group and cluster status if it is a db you can engage the db team and make sure that db is up and running fine okay everything is fine you can just go ahead and notify to the client and you can close the change this is how you need to present in interview point of view this is a presentation se presentation session so i take long time and i have explained uh, in and out so in interview point of view you need to explain clear cut in a precise manner okay i hope everyone enjoy this video we'll see you on new chapter